Hi there and welcome to the Vegan Interactions Academy. My name's Jeremy and I'm the founder of Vegan Interactions. When we first go vegan, you might think the hardest thing is finding out what to eat. Good, that's good. In my experience, the hardest thing was figuring out how to communicate why I'm vegan to non-vegans in this pre-vegan world. When we first go vegan, the first step is feeling comfortable in our own skin. Then we can think about inspiring change in others. I've had thousands of interactions with the public and I've learned a lot along the way. It's my goal over the course of these several short videos to cover the key concepts that have helped me to find my voice for the animals. And I'll do this by breaking it into two main sections. Psychology, which will basically be the theory behind uh, what we'll be discussing, and strategy, which will be the application of that theory in a real world environment. Did someone say psychology? Now I wanna preface this section by saying I am not a psychologist, but I love studying the subject. And I do collaborate with a pioneer in the field of clinical psychology. Now I'm not pretending to have all the answers, but I think I have a few that have helped me and my hope is that by sharing them, they may help you too. And I'm always evolving, so I'm sure my strategies will continue to evolve as well. Now for those of you who are here for the animals, I've got you covered. I'll be sure to incorporate at least one of our vegan interaction support staff into both the psychology and the strategy section. So why is psychology important? Communication is ultimately about understanding behavior change. And behavioral psychology has been around since basically the beginning of time. Understanding people's behaviors is what psychology is all about. Over the next few videos, I'll highlight the key concepts from psychology that I've applied to my interactions about veganism, both to help us be more confident as vegans and also to inspire the most change. Now the main inspiration behind vegan interactions was motivational methods for vegan advocacy written by Dr. Casey Taft. Casey has a PhD in the field of clinical psychology and he's the primary developer of the only programs to end and prevent domestic violence. He's applied these methods to vegan advocacy. So how do you think you can apply psychology to your life? Let's find out. Now one of the key concepts of psychology is to meet people where they are. In order to do this, we have to understand the stages of change, otherwise known as the trans theoretical model. For the purposes of my interactions, I like to look at this as four key stages. First is the pre-contemplation phase. Second is the contemplation phase. Third is that preparation or the action stage. Fourth is the maintenance stage. At the pre-contemplation phase, people haven't seriously considered the issues with animal agriculture. People in this stage may say things like, plants have feelings, or the overused bacon to try to upset us. At this stage, our focus should be on countering those common myths or justifications and providing two or three awareness building facts to get the person thinking about veganism. The contemplation phase means the person has seriously considered the issues with animal agriculture, but hasn't considered going vegan. This is a critical stage. This is where people are likely quite open-minded to having an ethical discussion about animal use and why it's completely unnecessary. We'll talk more about how to handle people in the contemplation stage in the strategy portion of these tutorials. At a high level, I like to ask open-ended questions around there being no biological requirement for us to eat animals. Therefore, it's completely unnecessary and unethical to do so. The preparation or the action stage is where things get exciting. This is where people have acknowledged the issues and have decided to take action and may have already started to do so. This is where it's good to talk about potential barriers and empowering that person with everything necessary to make the transition. I like to talk about how positive the transition was for me, about how it was easier than I expected, about how my first shop may have taken a little bit longer, but then after that, it's been easy. I might talk about what I do when I'm eating out or some of my favorite foods. I may also talk about those vegan transitional foods, the vegan ice creams, the vegan pizzas, so that people know that they don't have to miss out on their favorite foods. If someone says they think veganism will be too difficult, I like to ask them if they've ever done anything difficult in their lives. I then like to empower them and say, if you can do that, you can absolutely be vegan. I also encourage the person to find a support system, be it through Challenge 22 Plus or an email-based support system that can help them through their transition. The maintenance stage means that people have already gone vegan. Now this doesn't mean that our job's finished. There's a high recidivist rate with veganism, 
So it's important to reiterate those ethical considerations and talk about the person's support network. You may want to encourage them to attend vegan outreach events, such as Anonymous for the Voiceless, where they can help inspire change, or join vegan Facebook groups or meetup groups where they can get that support locally online to help keep them going. Now to assess what stage someone's in, I like to ask two key questions. First, if they've had much experience with veganism. If they say no to this, they're likely in that pre-contemplation phase. If they say yes, I like to ask them, have they ever considered going vegan? If they say no, they might be in that contemplation phase. If they say yes, there's a good chance they're in that preparation or that action phase. Then we can go to work.